Greetings my rabbit owners, which the rabbits themselves have droopy ears. My name is Flare Blitz and we have returned back to our adventures of Our Wonderland Act 3, Part 2. Are you going to keep telling yourself that, Genzu? And what are my eyes? Yeah, yeah. Take a step back towards the door, you keep telling yourself that. More like you can't accept the fact that I might actually be worried about him. Oh, this time as I bring my hand up towards the knob, Genzu jabs his elbow into my gut with such force that it knocks the breath out of me. He slams my back against the door, arm tight against my chest and keeping me pinned. It's at this point that I hear the footsteps outside come to a hasty halt, then voices, and not far away either. Genzu slaps his hand to my mouth as though afraid I'll say something. I can taste a sweaty palm against my lips. We just stand there, listening, waiting. A trickle of sweat works its way down the back of my neck, beneath my collar, tickling my shoulder blades. Genzu's breath is shuddered and halting just beneath my ear. They're shouting now. I can't make everything out clearly, but someone's mad. Really mad. And then, squishy fuds. Again and again, yeah, it seems like somebody has fallen out of line. I wince with each one, feeling Genzu's hand pressed even tighter against my skin. There's a final deafening crack. Yep, another shout. Then the margin begins anew. As it gets further and further away, I feel Genzu's grip loosen. When he pulls away entirely, I slide a good couple of inches down the door, releasing the built-up tension in my shoulders. Genzu wipes at his face, rubs at his eyes. He seems really bothered. I push myself up and away from the door, smoothing down the front of my shirt and wiping the residue sweat from my mouth. Can we go now, your highness? You know what? F you too. <laughs> Genzu just grumbles, but I can't help but notice the strange pain in his eyes as he says it. Almost like a blink. And for just a second, hmm, the room goes dark, and Genzu is closer. Much closer. So close I can hear his heartbeat. What's going on here? So close I can smell the scent of his chest. Yeah, yeah, um, what is going on here? So close my lips are put. The image vanishes. And I'm back in the cottage. Hand to my chest and fingers curled tight in the fabric of my shirt. Yeah, that was a different timeline, Iggy. I look at Genzu. He looks at me. I knew he felt it too, but just as quickly as the fiend had overtaken me, it's gone. I huff and turn away, arms curled across my chest. This isn't the time to be letting my thoughts run away from me. This place is weird enough as it is, and that's an understatement. And we have more important things to focus on, like figure out what the goddamn tarnation is even going on. And finding order. Well, Genzu is not going to comply with that last bit. If he really is here. He has to be here. There's no way he's... I don't give myself a chance to finish that thought. I shake my head to give my hair a tussle. Genzu just turns his head away with a grumble. Should we get going then, or what? Yeah, let's just go. We walk out the door in silence knowing what's going to be out the front door. God damn. The two of us are standing over the dead body of one of the rabbit guards. Yeah, in Act 1, you can clearly see what happened to this poor individual. It looks like he's been bludgeoned to death, which would explain the sounds we heard from inside the cottage while I was being throttled. It's fascinating, really. What part about this fascinate? But this rabbit being dead is fascinating. The way his head is dented inward, the way his veiny eyes bulge half out of his skull, the way the blood congeals on his fur in thick, dark clumps. Sorry, not so you see every day, or in every timeline we come here. I muse. Yeah, unless you're a serial killer. Yeah, you're probably used to this kind of thing. Different appearances. He's kneading his cap between his fingers, eye twitching. He glances at me with a cock on his brow. 
You don't ogling the flight corpse there, Iggs? I snap out of my daze with a shake of my head, not even having realized I'd been staring. Just grossing me out is all. And rightfully so, Genzu tugs his cap back over his tussled hair. Let's uh, keep moving then, shall we? He first looks to the left, then to the right. I say we go uh, this way. Something inside me snaps. Oh, so you get to make all the decisions now, do you? Yes, in this act, Genzu's the protagonist. <laughs> Genzu follows the ball. Good damn eggs, what's wrong with you? I was only suggesting we don't follow the homicidal rabbits, but go off. All right, I'll go off to the left then, and let's see how well I survive. What the hell? Um, I did it again. Where did that even come from? Why should I care which direction we're going? It feels like literally everything is setting me off, like if this is some kind of game. Sorry, I rub my eyes. There's a strange residue heat dancing in my chest from the receding flash of anger. That's fine. Yeah, let's go that way. Genzo looks at me for a moment longer, chewing on the inside of his cheek. Then starts off down the path. I follow after him. It's quiet as we walk. The tall clusters of fiery red corridor us in as River of Dirt directs us left and right like the waters in a canyon. Above us, the sky glitters a sunny orange. And on our either side, strange flowers of blues, purples, and teals dot the grass between the trees. I swear I did not yawn just then. I catch Genzu glancing at me. What? He turns back to the front, shrugs. Guess I almost hesitate to ask, but what do you wish for? Hmm. No, we've already done enough of the, um, being a little bit on the anti Genzu side. Nothing. Nothing, I finally say. Nothing? I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. I don't want anything. God damn, Mr. Perfect over here. <laughs> what is Perfect saying? None of your business, Genzu. Yeah, I had about 50 different things I could have wished for. I don't respond. Even now, I can't think of what I could possibly want. To make sure all of them is alright. But that's less of a want and more of a need. Like, I just seriously need to make sure he's okay. Make sure he's not, you know... The king of so or something like that. I let the thought trail off as my eyes drift towards the surrounding trees. As for myself, though, I just don't really care enough about my life, about things, about myself. It's rather sad, actually. I chew on the inside of my cheek as one does, the guilt is tickling the back of my neck again. You should have cared, my inner voice hisses. That's your problem. And now you've let everything get bonked up. That anger again. But this time I quell it with a huff. Iggy has been more angry in this act than the previous acts combined. And we're not even like a quarter of the way through this act. We round another corner and this time a path opens up into a small clearing. An outcropping of rocks overlooks a small pond at the other end. From its peak flows a miniature waterfall, light reflecting off the steady drizzle. I take a step towards the pond, only for Genzu to grab the back of my shirt. What's up? He quickly tugs me behind, sorry, back behind a nearby tree. Two seconds later, a rabbit soldier appears, his nose twitching, his eyes searching the ground. I freeze. Eyes wide, the two of us just watch the rabbit in silence. This. Damn it, I know this. I definitely know this. Images of blurred trees, of raising steps, are flashing through my brain. Yes, it must be feeling something do because his arm tightens around me. Possessively, almost. But rather than providing comfort, it just makes me scowl. I don't need your protection. I can take care of myself. 
I am a strong, independent, white-haired white man who don't need no friend to take care of him. I jerk away, but must misjudge the amount of force required because the momentum sends me stumbling forward and out from the safety of the trees. Well, what a jackass you are. My ass hits the dirt not more than ten feet in front of a rabbit. Iggy! I hear Genzu shaffer behind me as I attempt to scramble back to my feet. But the rabbit is already staring at me, looming over me. God damn, is he tall. I suddenly feel incredibly small. The rabbit's head cocks first left, then right. His ears switch. Who are you? He finally demands. I start to bring my hands up, hoping to somewhat wave myself off and change my mind. You know what? I don't need a shite. This is our world, and I'm not going to let some old rabbit do as he pleases, okay? I'm going to control the course of my destiny. I bring my index finger up and start to march forward. Yep. Yeah. But I'm unable to finish. Genzu rushes out of the trees and yanks me back behind him with such force it momentarily jolts the air out of my lungs. He puts his hands up like some sort of football quarterback ready to hike. We're just, uh, just passing through. Nothing to see here, he tries. But the rabbit doesn't seem to be buying it. He blinks, just staring at Genzu. Then his eyes dilate, widen, his ears go straight, alert. Wait a minute, you're that fella the king told us to watch out for, he chuckles. And you've got yourself a little side dish too. This must be my lucky day, a promotion and a treat. He raises his spear with a slobber, points it straight us at us, I then charges. It happens before I can process it. One second I'm standing behind Genzu and the next. Something yanks my wrist with such force as I wonder my shoulder doesn't pop clean out of its socket. I'm pulled out of the way of the charging rapid just before the spear would have gotten clean through my belly. I stumble forward, nearly topple against Genzu's shoulder. Then his fingers clamp even tighter around my wrist as he takes off down the path dragging me with him. I think if it was just us, then the rabbit would not have tried to impale us. Genzu! I choke out, barely managed to keep up, but he doesn't stop. Can't stop, apparently, because when both of us throw a glance back, we see the rabbit already after us, circling back and around, and renewing his charge. Blink, blink, blink! The path leads out of the forest and down along a river. The water wheezing by on our right. We're going so fast we don't even notice the roadblock until it's too late. Genzu hits it first. I hear him give a startled oomph right before I slam into the fleshy wall next to him. Wait, what do you mean my fleshy wall? Both of us fall backwards to the ground. What the, what the tarnation? Is a giant slab of pink flesh about wrist high just sitting there blocking the entire road. And it's wet. Sloppy. It looks like a... Yeah, it's a ton. And I'm glad this has context. Only for Genzu's yelp to tear my attention back to the rabbit behind us. Up, 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 up. Genzu shrieks and pulls me to my feet. Fingers crawling my shirt and practically throwing me up and onto the porous mass. I go head over heels, landing with a moist flop on my back. And just as I attempt to sit back up, Genzu follows. Clambering up so quickly, he loses balance and crashes straight into me. As one does. On a oversized turn, I slump back into the oozing ground with a spluttered oomph. Genzu's full weight coming down on top of me. And alas, we are unable to move. He says, Fudge my life, I hear Genzu mutter. But he doesn't move for a second. And as I'm lying there, I feel my heart start to pick up. Because I can feel him. His weight keeping me pinned. His legs straddling my hips. His... No, don't finish that sentence! <laughs> I squeeze my eyes shut. <laughs> Don't finish that sentence, please, for our sanity. All at once, memories of junior high are flashing back up into my mind and making my chest clench and my mouth dry. What if he... 
I don't let myself finish that thought. Panic getting the best of me, I shove up and against his shoulders with an exasperated huff. You best get off me, Genzu. We got ourselves a time to escape, up off. Get off! Genzu groans and starts pushing himself to his knees, but it's not fast enough for me. I give him another shove, voice sharper than I intend. Get off! Oh. This jolts him, and he jerks backwards so fast he slaps back to the ground with a splat. I push myself up onto my elbows and see him turn away. Cough. His face red. Sorry. <laughs> I just... The air. Got the air knocked out of me for a second. My mouth moves before I can stop. Well, maybe you should watch where you're going. He winces. Looks at me. Then towards the ground. Yeah. Sorry. He rubs a palm against his eyes and I see him mouth what looks like multiple rapid fire rounds of goodness sakes. But at this point I'm beyond care when we have more important things to be worrying about. My gaze goes first towards the rabbit. He's just standing there, menacingly at the edge of a flash, flesh slab, spear rigged and eyes sharp. He's not following us. So I let my eyes wander further, following the pink no nodal, sorry, of the ground, nodals of the ground back and around and up towards the cliff face. That's when I see him. I just realise this, but ever since we went back down into the Wonderland, Iggy's been a kind of a dick towards Genzu. And there's the eye. There, sitting on the side of a cliff, it's the largest goddamn eyeball I've ever seen in my entire life. Even larger than the other two largest eyeballs I've seen. It's round and wet and sitting there as though perched atop a throne. And upon our movement, its oversized pupil swivels with an almost audible rumble to stare straight at us. I think this is a ton. A groan, lips twisting in disgust. You've got to be goddamn kidding me. I throw a final look back at the rabbit to make absolutely sure he's not following us, then push myself shakily to my feet and try to take a step. Come on, let's just try to get across. But walking against the gelatinous surface turns out to be akin to walking across a waterbed. A very gooey waterbed. I promptly slip and fall face first into the pink pulp. Saliva gushes up through the jiggling paws. Next to me, Genzo is crawling forward on all fours, his face betraying his disgust. He turns towards me for a second, almost though about to say something. Then he must decide it against it because I see him wince and jerk his head forward. Hmm. I turn my own attention back to my hands and the way my fingers are sinking into the tongue's flesh. Fire quickly rises to the back of my throat. Disgusting. But I shake my head and keep going. I keep my eyes trained forward as I crawl, try not to look or think about the viosity seeping up beneath my fingernails. It's slow going, but we're making headway. Halfway there. Halfway across the vast ocean of pink. And this is probably where it's going to strike. We just need to keep moving. It's at that moment that the tongue moves. It starts as a low rumble. Oh, but this is just a calm before the storm. Then the salmon-colored flesh begins to undilate, giving rise to rippling tremors that send our bodies bobbing. What the... Damn, my hands go slipping and sliding just as a vertebral mountain of flesh rises up from the ground, taking us with it. The hell? Genzo loses his balance and lands with a splat on his back, his hands to his head. The growling hillock takes us up, 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 higher and higher, before just as suddenly shifting gears and rolling like a wave. The upsurge of flesh ripples, crests and surges forward, taking us with it. A little track of up from down, slipping and sliding across the slick surface. And only once it slows to a stop and my body slides limply down to the slide of flesh. Flesh, sorry. Hello there. Do I notice how close we are now to that all-seeing eye? Genzu glides down next to me. 
Neither one of us make a sound as the wobbling pupil of the eye dilates, focuses, and stares straight through us. I could see tiny twitches of movement, just ever so slight, jumping back and forth between us. Quiet. Moisture dribbles down my forehead and cheeks and past my collar to tickle my spine. Quiet. I close my eyes, take a deep breath. Then all of a sudden, my jaw grows taut. I feel my brows furrow as my lips curl into a scowl. This goddamn thing. I've had just about enough of this. This is our world. This is... My eyes pop back open with a snap. Hey! I push forward, separating myself from the slick surface of the turn and nearly toppling over. The eye's pupil jerks towards me immediately, dilating as it studies my wobbly frame. Iggy, what are you? Gensley winces and brings his hand to his cap, but I don't care what he's thinking, or what he's about to say. I raise my fist with an angry grunt. Hey, you, you big stupid, stupid... Bowling ball? Seriously, is that the best insult that you could come up with, Iggy? At least be artistic about it. Give it some kind of, you know, welly. The pupil shudders. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You're in a stupid turn of yours. I stomp down on the oozing flesh beneath my feet and it bounces with a gooey jolt. You think you can just block the road like that? I demand you let us through. The anger heat is so the angry heat is back. It's bubbling and surging up from my chest, spreading out across my arms with a fiery tingle. But again, we see a new side to Iggy in this act, a more angry side. I feel like I could take on anyone. Did you hear me? Another shake of my fist. You're going to let us through right now. The eye makes a curious noise, almost like a confused dog. Hey man, dude, do you see the sheer size comparison of both of us? I am like 1,000 of you. What are you going to do to me? I can fit you on my thumbnail. And I'm not saying, <laughs> okay, this is our world and you answer to me. I'm pointing right at it now. I can feel the tendrils of heat lapping at my skin. I can almost feel them rising from me, like a backdrop of fire and brimstone. This is not Minecraft. It brings a smile to my face, another noise from the eye. Then it quivers. And the pupils roll back, back and out of the view. Beneath us, the surface of the tongue unrolls and flattens with a rumbling flop. I... Did not expect that to work. Okay, I've seen stranger things. Genzu yelps and falls backwards onto his rear end. When he wobbles back to his feet, his eyes are as wide as dinner plates. And he has pretty hefty dinner plates. Then again, I do as well. Holy hell, Eggs. What was that? The anger in my chest is fading away, leaving behind a feeling of pride in its place. I just risen my pants with a triumphant grin. <laughs> oh, you know. Just telling news, boss. Kenzu blinks, cocks his brow. Then finally returns a smile. God damn, gotta say, that's a sight of you I've never seen before. I shrug and start towards the end of the town and be anxious to get back on solid ground. Just tired of being so mellow, I guess. And again, there's a side we've always seen of you, Iggy. Genzi watches me for a moment, then attempts to jog after me, and plumply slips straight into a puddle of saliva. <laughs> Mind the gap! Iggy, I mean, Genzu! Mind the gap between the tongue and solid land! Then again, we've always had having to manage to be flung up 100 feet in the air and crash onto the beach covered in, sorry, covered in saliva. Once clear of a turn, it's back to the road, which winds up and around, following the river to our right. I wonder if we're going to see that eye again in, later on in the act. Remember me? The one that you tormented? Well, I'm black, baby. 
Genzu tries to wring what he can of a v vicious muck out of his hat as I brush my fingers through the damp ringlets of my hair. I still feel gross. Even my pores feel clogged. What do I do for a shower right now? Hey, look. We're right next to a body of water. I guess we could, you know, clean ourselves off there. And do you see that waterfall behind the tree? Yeah, that could act as a shower. As I'm peering out ahead of us, a flash of movement catches my eye and my gaze goes immediately towards the far bank. A dock has been erected on the sand and a boat is slowly gliding its way over from the opposite direction. Genzu follows as my gaze is na He narrows his eyes. That's curiously convenient. Damn, he's not wrong. But at the same time... No, no. I remember this. The sight of a miniature white riverboat is enough to bring fuzzy, shifting images bubbling to the surface of my brain. Genzu looks from the boat to me, then back to the boat, and then back to me, and then once again back to the boat. He opens his mouth, closes it. By the time he opens it a second time, I'm already off, jogging in the direction of the dog and the boat. Goodness sakes! He clutches at his hand and starts after me. I get to the wooden steps of the dog just as the boat comes to a halt on the other end of a pier. Jesus, Genzu huffs behind me as he runs to catch up. To the left of the dock is cheery red and white sign with the word Giddy Cruise on it. Past it, I see the river fork with the right channel leading back along the direction we just come and the left leading deep into the unknown. Do not worry, as long as we can let you anything that we are the ones in charge of this wonderland, then nothing can kill us. I point towards the boat like some sort of overwatt tour guide. We can take this boat, bit of a walk in us for sure. You've got to be goddamn kidding me. Stay out here and get eaten and see if I can. I snap. For goodness sakes. Ugh, whatever. I grimace. I can't seem to stop lashing out. The words keep coming out of my mouth before I can stop them. That's an act of thinking. Sorry, that's an act of saying before thinking. I massage my forehead. It's like punching before speaking. Or punching before thinking. Then start silently up the steps. My ascent is halted, however, by a jovial high-pitched voice from the other side of a railing. Is there a plant again? Come and ride the kitty cruise. It's not the plant. And sail the waves for days. Adventure like you've never had. The end of your malaise. I stop. Oh, it's the, not the plant. It's the plant. Not the plant. It is the plant. I stop, blink, then lean over the railing for a peek at the ground below. It's a flower. Brilliant white petals adorn its oversized head and its glossy green leaves, slimy with its dance-like movements. Genzu steps up to the railing next to me, blinking curiously. Weird. The flower twists atop its roots as though looking up at us. Cap of orange, scent of height. The padded yearnings you cloak in trite are more glaring than your... Again with this really, really crude sense of humor of all yours that is directly pointed at Genzu and his... IRL lack of sight. I raise a brow. What's that supposed to mean? Means a cheeky flower is about to get his roots flayed. That's what. Genzu starts climbing up and over the railing. The flower brings his leaves up to its clacky yellow that word as well as slapping his hands to its cheeks in fright. It recoils at Genzu's approach. This gentle flower locked in its earthen cage. Woman's not the fruits of your misplaced rage. Genzu snorts. I can't but laugh. It's just a flower again. I don't need to get so worked up. Says one not getting ridiculed by. Yeah, that is very true. It's about perspective. Just ignore it. Come on. Genzu huffs but calms. He readjusts his cap on his head with a cavalier twist. Sorry. Nods once at the flower and steps back towards the stairs. The flower waggles its leaves as time turns its attention to me. 
Though with force and fury, your long journey may ease. It'll take longer than that for your heart to unfreeze. So you're saying that we're cold. The flower's words send a spark of electricity straight up my spine. You know you're just eating your own words now, but you told Genzu. I turned with a flash, stomping back down the steps and making a beeline for the flower. Iggy! Genzu just manages to grab the back of my collar before I go homicidal gardener on the poor plant. <laughs> Committing white petal flower genocide. He pulls me back towards the steps of the dock. I need another snort, face red with indignation. Damn, Iggs. What was all that about? Just ignoring it, huh? Genzu laughs, but I don't miss the anxious thrill just beneath the mirth. You seem a little high strung. I huff and rub at my eyes. I don't respond. Whatever, let's just get on the boat. I finally grumble and start wandering towards the end of the dock, Genzu following hesitantly behind. The boat is still anchored at the end of the dock, almost as well waiting for us. I feel a little bad for Genzu in this act, I'm not gonna lie. Like, like warranted Genzu is a bit of a prick at times, especially towards all of them, but Iggy and Genzu's like friendship, relationship has always been kind of solid throughout the entire way. Even in the most desperate and struggling of times, they've always been together like, I don't know, north and south or west and east. But this time, there is a little more fractious. It bobs up and down gently in the current. Looks fine to me. Once again, Genzu looks from the boat to me, then back to the boat. He doesn't say anything. Whatever. I'm not just going to stand there for hours. I step forward, tossing the leg over to the side, and half stumbling into the bobbing boat. What if this is how Iggy's going to treat Genzu from now on? It's going to get worse as the acts progress. Genzu reaches out as well, wanting to help, but just as quickly pulls back. He waits for me to sit down on one of the wooden benches before clambering in after me. So for a moment, I worry that it might sink beneath our combined weight. We're quite a bit larger than we were the last time we rode, but it ultimately holds true. Is there something we need to do to get it started? Genzu takes a seat across from me and glances around. Like I remember, Genzu's gaze drops to the deck. Fortunately, we're not left in the dark for long. Only a few seconds later, the water wheel in the back slowly chugs to life. With a shudder, the boat, sorry, the, boat, the boat begins to glide across the water. The river is calm, smooth, and the boat cuts through the water like butter, slowly but steadily. Once it reaches the fork in the river, it turns left automatically, taking us further away from our cottage, the rabbit guards, and that giant eyeball with its hugely in, 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 gross turn. The words could not get out of my mouth there. Gaines is still quiet. He's got his hands shoved in his pockets and is gazing somewhat morsely at the passing scenery. I scratch up my bare arm. I'm starting to calm down again, the heat dripping out of my pores. The gentle sway of the boat is helping, back and forth, sm slow and smooth. We round the bend, now drifting dreamily past colourful scenery. Nails of gold and green slope upwards and away from the riverbank and red and purple trees stretch towards the orange sky. Decorating the ground are flowers of all shapes and sizes, cattails, tufts of white cotton weed, all of it seemingly untouched, with no signs of life to disturb it. When I turn back around, I see Genzu staring at me. I blink. What? He looks away, guilty almost, as though he'd been caught doing something he wasn't supposed to do. Yes, I'm just still not used to it. A pause. Being able to look at you, I mean. Oh, I guess it, um, uh, must be weird. Yeah, weird. He looks up at the sky, then back at the deck. Coughs. And I mean, you know, it's nice. Like, seeing how, uh, you turned out. That's a me, though. 
But I could have gone without seeing. I'm ugly as hell. I mean, wow. I kind of wish I never found that out. You're not ugly. Maybe compared to all of them. I'm sure he really takes a cake. He was gas enough as a kid. Look, we don't choose how we spawn in life, okay? Although I do prefer Genzu being like this. You know, being mischievous and being somewhat of a prick rather than... I don't know, being all shy, hesitant, and uh, a refusal to speak when Iggy is angry. My anger flares up again before I can stop it, and I jerk forward with an almost audible snap of my spine. Ooh. For goodness sakes, would you give him a goddamn break? Genzu's eyes go wide, his face flushing. Got hit. Then his gaze turns sharp. What the hell is wrong with you? It's just all them. To you, it's just all them. Just all them. Just all them. Has it ever occurred to you that all them's a person too? That he's one of our friends and you treat him like, like the dirt itself? Well, sorry. Didn't know you were in love with a guy for crying out loud. Genzu grinds his teeth. And also, what the... Last I checked, you never cared about him before. What was all this, oh, woo, it's all and back when we were kids. I never saw you stand up for him. I press my lips together, heart twisting. It's true. It's goddamn true. I was a horrible person. Yeah, well, I'll rinse my gaze away. Maybe I'm trying to make up for it. Genzu rolls his eyes. Oh, well, good for you, Mr. Saint. But just because you're having an existential crisis about it doesn't mean you have to take it out on me. Hmm. Yeah, let's see how this progresses. I'm not going to lie. I'm really nervous, but I'm wanting to see how this progresses. He tried to kill himself. I jumped to my feet before I could stop myself, a momentum rocking the entire boat. He tried to kill himself again. Guess it stops. His face has gone white. He just stares at me, but not really at me. Past me. More like points in my direction, but watching something else entirely. Something else enti yeah, entirely on the surface of his eyes. Finally, he jerks away. Damn. He closes his eyes, opens them. I slum back down, my face in my hands. I hadn't actually meant to say it. It's not my secret to tell. But it's out there now. But it just popped out. Genzu tugs his hat off his head. I wonder if it's like any kind of alternate outcome then. Because of the fact that we spilled that secret. Then does it mean that we got a worse outcome? Uh, needing the fabric between his fingers. He looks like he's going to be sick. Stupid bugger. I just barely hear him mutter. He's just staring at the bottom of the boat. We continue on in silence, the air heavy on my back and shoulders. I can still feel the rage down in my stomach. Rage at Genzu. Rage at myself. It's churning and frothing just beneath my... that word. Genzu grunts softly. He's looking at something along the right-hand bank. What's that? Huh? That sign. I let my gaze follow his and spy a small wooden sign with the words Collect his territory head painted on it in blood red strokes. Who the goddamn hell knows? I mutter disinterested. I don't remember this collector guy from before. Well, if he tries anything, I'm gonna tear his goddamn head off, I snarl. Genzu flinches, recoils. I just wrap my arms around my chest, staring fiery daggers through the bench in front of me. On and on we glide. And on and on, the awe of animosity floats over my head like a cloud. Past tree after tree, bend after bend. Even past a strange yellow hillock covered in what appears to be slowly smoking trash. I say nothing. Genzu says nothing. Finally, the bird slows to a stop. 
and I look up to see a dog, identical to the one we embarked from. Yes, this is where we get off. There is no really, really mad moment of when we need to close our eyes and tell Genzo to close his eyes as well because it might be a life or death scenario. Or well, I guess Iggy's rage just so much with River decides, you know what, we're just going to let him pass this time. Genzo says sullenly and pushes himself up to his feet. I run a hand through my hair, scratching at the back of my neck. The hair there is standing straight up for reasons I can't fathom. Yes, yeah, because you're angry. You're like a hedgehog, man. Well, you survived a storm. And I swear I feel someone watching me the entire way off the boat and onto the dock. I shake it off, shrug my shoulders. Genzo has his hands in his pockets and is staring down at the wooden planks. I don't say anything as I walk past. Past the dock. A valley of dirt winds itself off and away from the river, bordered on either side by more trees. Come on. I finally mutter and start down the path. Genzu falls in step next to me. Behind us, a set of black tentacles curled around the boat's frame slowly sinks back into the water. Yeah, that's, that's completely normal. That's a completely normal thing to see. You know, you disembark from a boat and we're... <laughs> we're <laughs> we're going to see the boat just slowly sink into the waters. I'm not sure how long we walk. 20 minutes? 30? An hour? Time feels strange. Almost as though it's not passing at all. Yet when I think back to the cottage of discovering that hole in the tree, it already feels like a lifetime ago. And strangely, disconnected? I try to think about my apartment, about work, about the party. They all feel... fake. Did any of that really happen? Well, yes and no. Of course it did. That's my life. That's me. I look down at my hands as though it might reveal an answer to some unspoken question. Yeah. What the hell is all of this money doing in my hand? And my mind drifts back to that voice from the tree. What do you want, Iggy? I don't know. I still don't know. I think bad to be encountered with that eye. How satisfying it had felt to tell that thing off. For some reason, this makes me think of all of them. Maybe if I'd been able to tell Genzu off like that years ago, things would have never gotten so bad. I think that you were not at all the main means of preventing this from occurring. With Orlam's case, it was definitely Orlam's parents that was the main catalyst towards his path down to darkness. And no matter how good of a friend you were or how bad of a friend you were, I don't think any of that would have been prevented. Hell, think of what my own life could have been if I had that kind of Goal. Not coding websites in that tiny apartment over in Brookside, that's for sure. Not spending my nights falling asleep on the couch and waking up to ice cream stains on my shirt. No, I might have actually accomplished something with my life. But here we are. Keep dilly down and not actually putting our foot down. Gotten over my insecurities. We all have insecurities, Iggy. No matter how bright we are or how dull we are, we all have a weak point. And forge myself a place where I can actually feel like... Like... I meant to something. All of a sudden, my footsteps change in timbre. I glance down to see the dirt path has given way to cobblestones. Finally, some industrialism. Hmm. I stop for a moment studying the new pavement. That tingle along the back of my neck is back. Almost as though some part of me knew this was coming and knows what's going to happen next too. Next to me, Genzu half-heartedly kicks at a pebble. Guess we're finally getting somewhere. Through the foliage veiling the upcoming bend, I spy a splatting of bright colours, too bright even for the otherworldly trees. I thought this wonderlandly trees. There's something there. I expend the energy for a short jog, taking me around the trees and in front of what I can only describe as a gigantic billboard. I stop. 
take it in and feel my brows curl in on themselves. Yeah, this is all too familiar, isn't it? But, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Genzo trots up next to me, equally as stupefied. It's Gidget, only larger than life and wearing little, very little clothing. And if you can see past the veil, you... I'll let you finish that sentence. She's lying on her side, head propped up on her hand, and holding a martini glass in her other. Next to other words, come visit Wonderland's hottest goddess in bright purple paint. She feels like she's some kind of Amaria Amaf I've forgotten that goddess's name now, like the goddess of fertility in Japanese or something like that. I grind my teeth together, fist clenching, or maybe the goddess of the sun, that's what I was thinking. That's um, a side of Gidget I've never seen before. Genz's brow reaches for the sky. What the goddamn tarnation is this? Oh my god, for once Iggy is angry. What's suddenly gone into you in this anger of yours, Iggy? Where was this in past acts? But then again, not so much angry, please. It's a billboard, Iggs. Oh, stop with the goddamn jokes already. I mean, what is it doing here? And why is Gidget on it like some... <laughs> I could say this because it's actually a name of a show and it doesn't imply this. Porn stars. <laughs> I throw an exasperated hand in the direction of the board. You're asking me like I have any idea either. Genzo rolls his eyes. What is she even doing down here? Does she think this is some kind of game? Yes, this is some kind of game, okay? You, none of you just don't even realize it. I'm talking about the characters in the game, by the way. Genzo rubs at his shoulder with a frown but doesn't say anything. Not only is the sign peeing me off, but it's also making me uncomfortable. Why isn't there a picture of, <laughs> of autumn here instead? <laughs> then I would be happy. I have to put up with enough of that being shoved in my face in my daily life. For hell though. Now here's my good friend Ravine, much more than I've ever wanted to see of her making my stomach turn flip-flops. I wonder if we're going to direct our anger towards Gidget for a change, because I feel like it's somewhat justified with what we know what's going to happen next, or an alteration of it. I bring my hands to my arms as uncomfortable prickles begin turning my arm hairs skyward, not just my hair. I shake my head and turn away, looking instead further apart. It's bordered by other smaller placards that stick up and out of the ground like signposts. All of them sport gadgets, some, sorry, some in gorgeous dresses, some in bright summer assembles, some in ridiculous get-ups that look like they've come straight out of a, out of a fantasy or horror movie. I see Genzu chewing the inside, inside of his cheek. Yes, it confirms Gidget's here. I wonder if in a few... <laughs> if I ever play this game again, I'm going to make a counter of how many times the words chew on the inside of cheek comes about. Like, just generically, I huff, but then realize if Gidget's here, the chance that Autumn is also here are much higher. In fact, Gidget might even know where he is. I start quickly down the gidget lined path, though it's not paved in yellow. D Jesus! I hear Genzu yell before his shuffling footsteps rush up behind me. This ain't the Boston Marathon, Iggs. This is the Boston Marathon, and you cannot stop me. Twenty placards later sees us at the entrance to a small village. Am I just going through this game quicker, or is it just the fact that this particular particular act at the moment is shorter? Or maybe the castle part of it will be huge, like the castle itself. A survey of the quaint white and dark wood cottages, the puffing chimneys, the curving cobblestone road, and vine dappled walls. I remember this, though not quite as clearly as the kiddie crews, more like out-of-focus snapshots. 
For once, we're not the only ones here. People are milling about, walking from building to building. But none of them so much as glance up as we look around. I walk down the street with purpose, my gaze going sharp as I take in our surroundings. Next to me, Genzo is adjusting his cap as he huffs to keep up with my forward pace. I round the next corner and stop. A crowd of people is gathered outside one of the more ornate looking homes. There's a good 15 to 20 of them. And though they whisper among themselves occasionally, their attention seems fixed on the door. Never has a door in any kind of reality or dimension have had this kind of attention before, before today. Genzu promptly rams into my back. God goodness. But I ignore him because I know who's going to come out of that door. The one. The only. All of No, I'm just kidding. It's Gidget. And I can already feel my jaw tighten. Good morning, darlings. The door flings open to reveal Gidget with her hand raised above her head to greet the crowd. We're going to just smash through this facade by saying, Enough with the crap, Gidget. You're going to tell us where all of is right now before I'm going to have to send you back to the Shadow Realm like I did with that gigantic eye. The previously quiet gathering erupts in cheers and applause. Thank you so much for seeing me off today. Another shoot, can you believe it? The scouts here just can't keep their eyes off me. She dances down the steps, crowd parting to allow her room. Immediately, there's hands reaching out, thrusting papers and books for her to sign, trying to catch a passing touch of her arm or shoulder or just even the scent of her. We love you, Gidget! Marry me, Gidget! Gidget's mouth curls in an over-exaggerated frown as she waltzes through. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in quite a rush today. She pauses, then smiles with a wink, but I suppose one or two autographs wouldn't hurt. All of them say fudge off. No, <laughs> if the crowd goes wild, fleeing their pens and photos and that at her with even more vengeance. Me first, Gidget. I'm your number one fan, Gidget. Marry me. She turns towards the person standing nearest her. A teenage girl with a bouncy ponytail and decked out in pins, stickers, and accessories all featuring Gidget's name or face. Wasn't that the girl in Act 1 who was murdered because of the fact that she managed to get a signature? The girl wrings her hand excitement as Gidget signs her name in her autograph book. By this point, I've had just about enough. I am done with waiting, and we are going to face Kitchen right now. <laughs> I stomp straight towards the crowd and that bouncing waterfall of blonde hair. <laughs> Gidget. Gidget turns at the sound of my voice. But before she can respond, my hand is on her wrist and I'm tugging her out and away from the crowd. The air turns instantly tense and I hear cries of anger and disappointment begin bubbling up from the crowd. Gidget flashes with him a somewhat confused smile and waves her hand to calm him down even as I continue to pull her away. It's alright darlings, this is my friend, I'll be right back. Another tug, this one cutting her off as I spin her towards me and bring my hands down on her shoulders. Oh. I stare at her. For goodness sakes, this is a goddamn new side of all this. It's almost like Iggy thinks that Gidget knows, she knows where all of them is. She stares at me. Her eyes blink at me in a jade stupor. I Iggy? She finally says, almost nervously. You're here? I can't believe it. Then the tiny wins. Is uh, something wrong? What exactly do you think you're doing? What do you, uh, mean? She chuckles with a qu quick glance behind... Sorry, back to her crowd of irate fans. This! I gesture towards her dress, her perfectly coffled hair. This! Then turns the crowd. And <laughs> towards the crowd and beyond house. What are you doing down here? Why are you... I bring her hand to my forehead with a sigh. How long have you even been down here? She looks away with a guilty frown. I'm not really sure, to be honest. The days have all kind of run together. Yeah, Miggy. 
Her gaze jumps back up with a chewy gleam, but I'm having so much fun. This place is so amazing, Iggy. Like, even better than when we were kids. I'm happier than I've been in, well, since as long as I can remember. A laugh. <laughs> and now that you're here, things can only get better. She finishes with a wink. I think, Gidget, that your anger or possible anger is going to meet its match. I feel my gut twist in what could either be anger or discomfort, or both. It's at this point that Genzu finally manages to push himself through the crowd next to us. He gives a yellow yelp as he twists away, nearly falling to the cobblestones in the process. God bloody damn it, that guy walk here? He scowls and smo so smooths down his rumpled clothes. Are you here too, Genzu? Gidget smiles. Genzu looks up at us, at my grip on Gidget's shoulders. When he brings a finger up to say something, I let her go and cross my arms with an annoyed huff. I see you've already been given the privilege of experiencing Iggy's newfound attitude. <laughs> I love the way you put that. He does seem a little high strung. <laughs> Seems like someone could use a little Wonderland cheer of his own. Cheer? I squawk, my hands splayed in disbelief. We were almost killed! Genzu taps his chin. He does have a point about that. Oh, come on. Killed? I think you're over exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, if you were chased down by a 10 foot rabbit, then maybe you would feel what it's like to almost have our life flashed away before our eyes. This place is like a giant playground. There's nothing down here that would hurt a flea. Because fleas don't exist in the Wonderland. Yeah, maybe not in this sheltered garden of Eden you created for yourself here. But have you tried stepping outside for just one second? I throw a finger down. Sorry, back in the direction we came. You're warping this place into a nightmare. Gidget rolls her eyes. Hands are going to her hips. Maybe it's your attitude. If you just try to enjoy yourself, maybe you had a little bit of fun. I bring my hands to my hair with a frustrated grumble. I mean, I don't agree with everything she's saying, but I do have to admit that you need to chill down a bit. Ch sorry, chill out a bit, Iggs. Genzo raised his brows in wary concern. Yeah, I've never seen you like this before. I start turning my gaze towards the sky as though it'll provide me an answer. The sky answers back. Kill them, X. Mutilate them. Kill them. And find all them. But I don't finish. I can't finish. My throat feels so tight with anger that I can't seem to get the words out. So instead I grind my teeth together and jerk my head away. You know what? F this, I'm going to go get a drink. I say before stomping off in a, in a direction of the end. <laughs> Gidget and Iggy, sorry. Gidget and Genzu's expressions are so contrary to one another. You go do that. I'm going to have a fantastic shoot down by the pier. Gidget shouts after me. Then turns away with a huff of her own. Blondie hair fluttering behind her. Genzu must find himself at a loss because he watches me for a moment, watches Gidget, then gives us a wince and jogs off after Gidget. Good. I just want to be left alone for a little while. I don't need any of them. Damn, Iggs. You okay there? Maybe you need a Snickers bar. I'm not sure how long I've been sitting in the inn drinking. One hour? Two hours? Wait a minute, why do I even have this money in the f Maybe that's what we had in our hands in the forest. The money to be able to be able to drink. I start with a beer. But after I realize how full it's making me, I'll switch over to whiskey. Yeah, because that's a better alternative when it comes to quantity. The woman behind the counter just keeps bringing more and I don't tell her no. I'm not a heavy dr drinker, so in fact, I won't even call myself a drinker. I like the occasional beer with friends, and sometimes when I'm in mood, I'll buy myself a bottle of wine and have myself a little movie night. 
but I'm not normally one who enjoys the feeling of losing themselves to a drink. Now, however, something about the anger and frustration dancing around my belly is making me crave it. That feeling of disconnect that grows with each passing drink. What's wrong with them? All of them. Why are they acting like this is some sort of game? All they ever think about is themselves. Aren't you also doing that, Iggy? Thinking about yourself? Thinking about what you feel is right for yourself at the moment and that main, main attention is all of them? And they don't care who they end up hurting along the way. Do you know? Do you know, Iggy, you're doing that as well? To Genzu mainly? I don't want your attention. I don't want your protection. Alright, then we'll hit quit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. How long does this go off? Oh, how many? Oh, it goes on for many more pages. Okie dokie. How many pages do we have in total? It, it don't it don't do that it doesn't go that way it would just have to go this way then i could take care of myself maybe if they even given me a fraction of the unwanted attention they've always showered on me to all of them none of this would have happened you are as guilty as well you're as guilty as them you know or uh, iggy goodness sakes all them. I'd completely forgot to ask if Gidget had seen him. Oh well. They'll be back here soon enough. No doubt to fret and dot on me some more. I down another shot of whiskey and feel it burn its way down my throat. The heat is throbbing in my chest and already everything has a slightly fuzzy lethargic feel to it. Hey uh Iggy. I don't even have to turn around to know who it is. That voice is enough to send my hair jotting upwards again and my suspicions are confirmed when I find Gidget and Genzo staring at me in concern there's a weird kind of pity in their eyes come on eggs why don't you come join us at the table over here huh Genzo motions towards an empty table near the far wall well I'm already at a table oh I see what this is I snuff rub at my mouth gonna gonna have an intervention or some stuff you're so sweet i slide off my stool with a slight stumble both of them jerk forward to catch my fall i scowl and yank myself away waiting until they pull back before meandering towards the table in question i slump into the nearest chair yeah the word slump is a good indication that maybe you should have time out from the alcapoos Eggs. Genzu sits down across from me, claps and unclaps his hands. He looks nervous. Is everything okay? You're not acting like yourself, Iggy. Gidget this time. Like myself? What does that even mean? I rest my chin in my hands. You mean not going along with your little game of dress up? Maybe I don't want you dragging me around like some doll, huh? What are you? That's not even. Gidget's face goes red. And you. I turn to gaze at Simon, who sits back with a little start. Maybe I don't want to go along with all your little smart-ass comments anymore. Maybe I think you were an a-hole all these years. Damn, gains his eyes twitchy. He looks away, looks back, looks at the table. Which reminds me. I was actually meaning to ask, I continue turning back to Gidget. You haven't seen all of them around, have you? Oh, great. I should have known this was about that. Bugger. Genzu jolts to his feet, hands coming down hard on the table. It's all in this and all in that with you, isn't it? That little weasel doesn't deserve half the energy you're putting in freaking out about him. I stand up to match him, enjoying the height advantage I have over him. Says the one who made him the way he is. What the hell did he ever do to you, huh? Genzu's face goes red, redder than I've ever seen it. He bites down on his lip, tears of frustration glimmering in the corners of his eyes. Maybe I don't need to tell you, huh? That stuff's between me and him. Just know that that little blank has ways of getting exactly what he wants. And if you... Guys, guys! Gidget's voice cuts him right off before her arms come between us. Just... 
Just calm down, okay? Everyone's staring at us. I throw a glance out into the inn and am met with wide-eyed stares of the majority of its patrons. My face grows incredibly warm and I drop quickly to my seat, tendrils of sweat weaving down the nape of my neck. Genzi follows suit. He tugs at a collar of his jacket, wipes at his forehead. Thank you. Gidget sighs and takes her own seat. Fingers laced together atop the, the table, sorry. Ugh. I need a smoke. I see Genzu's fingers shaking as he pulls out his carton of cigarettes and puts one between his lips. I'll be right back. Then he shoves his chair back and heads for the door. Gidget and I watch him leave. An awkward silence hanging over the table. Anyway, uh, she curls a lock of hair be behind her ear, all of a sudden acting shy. You want to know about Orlum? He's, uh, he's here. Ah, this brings the first light of hope into my heart since stepping foot in this godforsaken place. He is? Oh, thank goodness, God. I lean forward and grab Gidget's hands in a move that must completely take her back because her eyes shoot wide open. Uh, you don't know how worried I've been about him since, well, since yesterday. And he's like, well, what I never think. He's doing okay? Gidget glances down between my grip on her hands and my close proximity to her face. Her cheeks go pink. Is he okay? Iggy, like he's like in charge of everything. To be honest, I'm surprised you don't know yet. In charge of everything? In charge of... This gives me a pause and I release my grip on Gidget to sit back in my chair, blinking. Yeah, what is he in What the... I don't know where that came from, just another version of the game just opened up. <laughs> uh, okay, back to this. Yeah, he lives in this huge castle. It's just across the lake. Actually, I've been up there a few times. Amazing dinner parties. Dancing, you name it. She brings her hand to her chest with an awkward smile. Sorry, awkward laugh. Though I haven't been up there in a little while now since last time he tried to get me to sleep with him. I mean, that's awkward enough already. But also all the other women I've talked to at those parties say he's into. Her gaze drops, rises, drops again. Finally, she looks back up. But stuff. Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, aren't most guys? Let's just go with the more open question. Aren't most guys? Okay, I'm, I'm going to roll with this, but I'm not going to say yes or no to... I'm not sure if I if I say it to defend all of them. Or if I say it to somehow make myself sound normal. You know, like I actually know what I'm talking about. But either way, I try to laugh it off. Aren't... <laughs> Aren't most guys... I forced a chuckle. Gidget looks away. Then back. No, I mean like... On himself. Um... I blink. Then I... <laughs> you only just got the connotation now. What Gidget's saying is that... Wallum likes to be sat on. <laughs> that's uh... That's uh... Anyway, this conversation is getting too weird. But you guys should definitely go check it out. I'm sure he'd invite you to one of his parties. And I'm sure it won't be quite so uh, awkward. <laughs> A pause. Well, I guess I'm not so sure about him. She throws, she throws a nervous glance at the door. Yeah, Genzu. Seems like there's some uh, stuff going on between them. Tell me about it. I run a hand through my hair. I'm not sure if it was the argument, the embarrassment, or just the general awkwardness of this whole situation. But the comforting lull of the alcohol has already started to wear off, leaving nothing but exhaustion in its wake. And now that I know that Orlum is okay, some of the anger has also begun to recede. I scratch on my neck, sweat soaking into the grooves under my fingernails. Sorry, uh, for snapping. I guess I was just... Just what? I don't even know, to be honest. Frustrated? Confused? Worried about Orlum? I'd just been so overcome with so much anger. Anger I couldn't control. I throw a glance around. This place. It's this place. 
Ever since I woke up here, I'd feel weird. Like all my emotions are heightened. I need to be careful. If even someone as easygoing as me could get lost to a little spark of anger like that, I can't even imagine what real fury could turn into. Or any other extreme emotion for that matter. Almost as if on cue, I feel the touch of skin on my hand, and I jerk up, I'm sorry, jerk my head up to see Gidget's fingers curling softly around my wrist, okay? It's okay. Everyone's worked up, I understand. I just, to be honest, I'm really happy to see you here, Iggy. I've been thinking about you a whole lot while I've been down here. I blink, press my lips together. You, uh, you have? I mean, I guess I have had a lot to think. A lot of time to think, sorry. The face softens. About my life. About the things I want. That's, uh... Fortunately, at this moment, Genzo returns. His face is settled into a shallow sort of grey, and his eyes look dark and just slightly pink around the edges. Hey, sorry it took so long. He stops. However, when his gaze lands on the table, or more specifically on Gidget's hand on mine, oh, he looks up away towards the ceiling. His eyes tighten, making his face look, if it's even possible at this point, even more despondent. Sorry. I pull my hand back, sticking it between my legs as Bird wants to hide it away. It's nothing. We were just talking. Did you uh, said all of us here? Oh. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, maybe try to go see him tomorrow. I see. It grows quiet again. So I cough and push my glasses up on my nose. Maybe now we call it a night, though. I don't know about you guys, but I'm exhausted. Yeah, all of that anger is sort of exhausting, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty beat too. That's not a bad idea. Genzo tugs his hat off, scratches it at his scalp. After a few more moments, we both turn to look at Gidget. She stares back blankly, then jumps. Oh, oh right, of course. They've got rooms here you can both stay in. Come on, let me just go ask Mrs. Graham. She stands up and begins making her way towards the back counter. Genzo and I shuffling along the behind. Mrs. Graham, my friends were wondering if they could have some rooms for the night. Of course, dear. Anything for a local goddess, the older woman says with a wink before procuring two sets of keys. Gidget just blushes. Thank you so much. Then turns to us. Here you go. The rooms are just upstairs. Ah, and you can find your room number on the key. I grab my hand from Gidget. Thanks. This is really great. See you in the morning then. She nods with a smile, and I don't miss her gaze go pointedly towards the etched in numbers on the top of my key as it passes our hands. I palm it quickly. Yeah, uh, thanks. Genzu takes his. Then both of us are trudging our way up the steps, coming out of the landing into a quiet hallway lined with doors. We reach Genzu's first, and he turns towards it with a little sigh. I chew on the inside of my cheek. I think this is the first time we've done that in this wonderland. Maybe it's just me. Hey, uh, I'm sorry about downstairs. It's okay. He doesn't even turn to look at me. Instead of focusing on getting the shaky tip of his key into the lock. I watch him for a moment, then turn away once he gets it in and clicks it open. Anyway, good night. I murmur as I start down the hall. Iggs, about, about me and Orlam. I stop, turn, see him staring at the wood panelling of his door. When he finally glances towards me, his eyes are tight. He shakes his head, looks away. Never mind, get some sleep. There's definitely more behind Genzu and Orlam than we realise. I feel like it is not just Genzu picking on Orlam, but there is some other beef that we don't know about. Like, there could be some kind of warped perspective that we have not realized yet. An event, something that happened between the two of them. Or perhaps even their parents is, I don't know. I watch him push open his door and step inside. You two. The door shuts with a click. Then carry on to my room just a few doors down the hall. 
When I twist the key in the lock and push open the door, I find myself in a cosy room outfitted with a bed, wardrobe, and desk. I step inside. Quiet. It's wonderfully quiet. I'm finally alone. I hadn't realized quite how much I needed this until right this moment. I can practically feel my chest unclench itself muscle by muscle as I let out the longest breath of my life. I meander towards the bed, it, sorry, bed sorry, it's decorated with a thick red quilt and crowned at the top by two fluffy looking pillows. I sit down and feel the mattress curve delightfully beneath me and take the opportunity to examine the room. The walls have been built with thick rounded logs. It reminds me of the old cabin I stayed at during camp one summer. Rustic. My body still relishing in the quiet. I kick off my shoes and swing my legs up and onto the bed. God, it feels good to get off my feet. I let my eyes wander towards the scene and that white swath of nothingness I wash my brain. So I wish my brain wouldn't get lost in. Tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll finally be able to see all of them. To a certain with my own eyes that he is, in fact, okay. That thought brings me some peace. As crazy as things are around here, at least I can latch onto that. He's like in charge of everything. I curl my top lip upwards, stretching my toes inside my socks. All them? In charge of everything? It's a strange thought for sure. It's hard for me to imagine Malzy all embossing anyone around, let alone everyone. And yet, I'm kind of glad for him. He deserves a chance to call the shots for once, even if it can only be in a fantasy world like this. My brows furrow. Yeah, in a fantasy world like this. We still need to figure out what the hell is even going on. Maybe he'll be able to help with that too. Maybe he even knows where Bucks is. Something tells me she's the key to all this. Don't, you don't say... It all started after that call from Huno, after all. There's a knock at the door. Sorry, knock on the door. I grimace, but somehow it's not like I don't know it was coming. Didn't know, sorry. I swing back around reluctantly and slide my feet back into my shoes. I mean... I shuffle towards the door, fumble with the doorknob. Is it Gidget? Is it Gidget behind that door? Is it really going to be Gidget behind that door? Put it open. Oh, yeah, of course. Gidget's shy smile greets me from on the other side. Hey, I say. Hey, she says back. Sorry, I, uh, I mean, is it okay? We kind of got interrupted early and I just wanted to talk. I wince, but I don't really feel like I can turn her away at this point. Sure, uh, okay. I'll move to the side so she can come in. So in the first fate, she was halfway between being out of a window and being indoors with a lot of the window being broken and her being impaled with the rest. And the second one was unknown. She was still alive, but we still had the hordes of uh, zombies running after us. So what's going to wait us in Act 3? These rooms are nice, yeah? I stayed in one my first couple of nights here, before everyone prepared that place for me in town. Yeah, it's nice. I stand in the doorway, unsure what to do, then finally slide my way towards the bed. I perch myself on the edge, expecting her to take the chair in front of the desk. She sits next to me on the bed instead. Don't move. My face feels like it's frozen in place. You're leaving tomorrow then, she asks softly, gaze centered on her lap. I mean, you can come along if you want to. Gidget? It's, uh, well, I guess I'd like to check on all of them, you know, for, uh, uh, for personal reasons. I shift my legs, lean my elbows on my knees. You seem really worried about him. Do I? I mean... It's not any more than normal, really. Oh, yeah, your newfound anger at any time when Genzu does not like the topic of Orlum. He seems to be doing really well for himself down here, so I don't think there's anything to worry about. 
Then again, he has always been a little different. She laughs at this. Kind of the odd one out, you know. Hmm, to be honest, he's always kind of weirded me out. The way he just follow us around like a little mouse all through school making weird comments. And that ugly rat tail. Hmm. Oh, come on. That rat tail is kind of cute. I chew on the inside of my cheek, feeling those uncomfortable twinges of guilt begin rising up in my belly. Okay, but rat tail... So, rat tail... Uh, a lot of character, you know. And it's admittedly kind of cute. Cute old police, Ziggy. The 80s called and wants his hairstyle back. <laughs> Sorry, but to me, it just screams greasy slime ball. To be honest, it's no wonder he's never had a girlfriend. He might as well have girl with <laughs> repellent hang from the back of his head. It's like in Pokemon, you keep applying the max repel to repel any Pokemon encounters, but in this case, it's all in but with um, anti-female repellent. But that's really harsh. I'll simply look at her a moment, blinking. Damn, I'd never realized there was such a source of well, vitriol before. While I'd never found it particularly attractive myself, I don't find, well, much of anything attractive. Vitriol. So maybe I'm not uh, the best judge. Who can say that they are still? Some part of me perhaps always wondered what it'd be like to run my fingers through it. This thought brings a flush to my cheeks. You can say it's a bit weird, isn't it? To want to run my fingers through another guy's hair? I put a hand to my own hair as though this will somehow hide my embarrassment. Gidget, however, must take this as a sign of disapproval. And I see her own face fall. But, but, I mean, I do know he's gone through a lot. I remember when his mum... Yeah. Wait, Gidget knows about that, but Genzu's son s somehow doesn't? No way, that was about him, not the mother. The silence returns. Gidget brings her hands up, presses her thumbs together. Anyway, I meant what I said downstairs. I really have been thinking a lot about a lot of things. Maybe it's because of this place. There's not really a lot to worry about down here, you know. So, I feel like my mind's been a bit clearer. I rub up my wrist, gaze lifting from the floor to centre somewhere around Gidget's knees. Also, like, finally getting something I'd wanted for so long. How happy it's made me. Kinda makes you think about the other things you've been wanting, huh? You know? I don't respond at first. But when Gidget glances up, I give a little grunt. She smiles. Seeing you here, finally. It made me really happy. And then downstairs when you held my hand so tightly, I couldn't help but think that... that you too. She brings her hand to her cheek face red. Iggy, I... She swallows, takes a deep breath, seems to be girding herself. Then brushes the straps of a... Alright. Well, this is kind of escalating quickly, isn't it? My eyes grow about five times their size. Well, gosh dang it, isn't this a development? Gidget seems horrifically embarrassed. Her face and neck have turned bright red. And at first she can't seem to stop wanting to hide herself with her arms. But finally she lets them fall, burying her entire upper half. Gidget? I choke. My own face is probably the same colour. I don't like them very much, but, but I thought you might, so... I don't... You don't... You don't really have to do that. Uh, <laughs> bring your hand to my eyes to half shield them. My whole body has gone tense. A cold chill working its way up my spine and making my skin crawl. It's okay. I want, I want to, Iggy. I see a smile. Pull her legs up on the bed, turn towards me. I, I want you to see me, Iggy. I want to make you happy. Goodness sakes. I bite down on my tongue so hard I can taste blood. I'm starting to shiver. 
uncontrollable quake shoot up and down my arms and legs. All of this. I... I did all of this for you. Why? I finally managed to croak. I'm still trying to do my best to not really look at her, but also not completely look away so as to not be rude. Gidget pauses for a moment, a look of confusion crossing her face. Then she smiles shyly. Because I... I like you very much, Iggy. And I've always hoped that maybe... Maybe you like me too. Her cheeks go even redder. I'm sorry it's a little forward, but I... I thought since you're leaving tomorrow... A pause. Then she seems to get flustered. B -b but you don't have... Don't need to give me an answer right away. I, I know you guys, you, you need your time to think and all. She crawls forward, one hand to my thighs, the other goes to my shoulders. But maybe tonight, we could, I could, take care of you. What do you mean by take care of you? Then leans in, her lips go to the side of my neck. You'd like that. Wouldn't you? The touch sends cold needles all up and down my shoulder and just clenching tight with knots in my stomach. I feel my throat constrict, which forces an undignified gasp of air hissing between my teeth. G Gidget, could you please put your clothes back on? I say with a shudder. Gidget stops, pulls back. Oh no, is she going to get angry? Blinks. I'm offering you no strings attached to that. You do realize that, don't you? I realize that very well. Thank you. And I appreciate the uh, sentiment. But uh, I don't really... Uh, it's just... I'm, I'm really tired. We could do this another night, but I'm really tired. I'm really fumbling. My whole back feels like it must be coated with sweat my fingers shake as I run them across my clammy forehead Gidget stares at me for a moment then narrows her eyes you think I'm disgusting don't you? I knew it I see her brows furrow as her top lip begins to tremble but what? I never said how could you Iggy she brings her hands to her head clutching her hair everything everything i did everything for you iggy my heart shudders in my chest and the spark from earlier returns what are you even talking about but she's barely listening instead she's tugging at her hair pulling at it yanking and yanking until giant handful of snap away between her fingers this stupid hair i hate it this stupid stupid dress now she grabs the folded fabric slumped around her belly and begins pulling at it. I hate it! Gidget, stop! I reach forward to stop her from ripping the fabric apart. But this just seems to incite her tried tirade further, sorry. And I hate the stupid fat lumps! She grabs at her chest, fingers forging divots in the soft skin. But I thought you would... Iggy, you of all people, I gave up everything for you. I wanted to be your, you be perfect for you. Something inside me snaps. Who asked you to do that, huh? Cause I sure as hell didn't. Ooh, that is really deep. I point my finger right up in her face, unable to stop, unable to keep the words from tumbling from my mouth. I don't want any of this. I don't want to get giggly, giggly, giggly. I don't want people throwing themselves at me. I don't want people ev expecting things of me. And that's what Genzu provided to us in Act 2. A person that doesn't expect anything from us, but it's just there. I don't want you. Your just face goes white, then red, then purple, then green. <laughs> she opens her mouth. Then screams. It's so loud and shrill I have to clamp my hands over to my ears to stop my head from reening. She screams and she screams and she screams. Then she grabs the lamp off the table and throws it straight at my head. I hate you. 
It hits me square on the ground, and for a second, it feels like a knife is searing its way into my brain. White hot stars flash across my eyes as the point of impact pulses. Pulses, bursts up and down and inside my skull. Goodness sakes, I shout. Eyes quickly filling up with tears. She's already reaching for it again. Crawling like a spider across the mattress and towards the dented lamp. But through my wobbled vision, I managed to kick it away, sending it flying across the room and cracking against the far wall. Now's my chance. I go scrambling off the bed, one hand still clutching at the back of my head, and race for the door. The bed groans as Gidget flies off. And then I hear footsteps, clattering, the sound of the desk drawer being opened, but I pay it no heed. All I focus on through is sorry, through my pulsing vision is the door. Get out, get out, get out! I say as it so far, so I ram my shoulder into the wooden paneling, which takes the air out of me again. Then I'm fumbling, fumbling, fumbling with the knob, my fingers like clumsy sausages. I turn around to check on... I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. This is a horror scenario. And... Whoa. This, this is impaled. On my chest. I need to find myself thrown back against the door. I thought part of your dresses were gorged off. She's there. She's here. It's all happening so fast. So far, I don't register the pain. I glance towards my right shoulder to see a large pair of scissors sunk handled deep just above my armpit. Gidget's fingers curled so tightly around them, her whole hand is shaking. Sheesh. A deep red puddle is forming across my shirt, oozing out like a scarlet pit stain. Gidget? This must snap her out of it because her eyes go wide, her, her wild eyes go suddenly clear and she steps back, letting go of the scissors and just staring at me, staring at the bloody handle of the scissors trembling in the air. Iggy? She says softly. I take advantage of this moment to reach across and yank the scissors out of me. Oh. Well. Uh, this is a brand new development. Then stab him straight into her neck. Oh, she gurgles. And coughs. Her hand goes to her throat. And she pulls out the blades. Letting loose a waterfall of blood. She drops the scissors and limps back towards the center of the room. Gagging, choking, coughing. Her hand, so both hands to her neck and trying to stop the divulge of blood. She drops to her knees, falls onto her back, eyes bulging and pleading at the ceiling. She's shaking, twitching. Her throat rattles and wretches as though she's trying to say something. All the while, the puddle of blood beneath her grows. I wander over and pick up the scissors off the ground, kneeling down next to her. I'm strangely calm. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good word to say before calm, Iggy. Just staring at her. I barely even feel the pain in my shoulder. Oh, that was your shoulder that was impaled. And my muscles aren't shaking anymore. Overcome by adrenaline? Emotion? In fact, I'm perfectly still. Gidget's eyes turn towards me. I can see the veins bulging. See her mouth something inaudible as I say in Mortal Kombat finish her off I lift the scissors into the air and plunge them into her chest the blades snap in nicely like sticking a knife into a pumpkin for carving and a red stain quickly spreads out and away from the hole, turning her white dress a dark crimson. She's not moving now, only small twitches, and the hands pressed against her throat has gone limb, allowing the blood to easily free escape freely from the hole in her neck. I pull the scissors back out with a sick squelch, then stamp them in again, 
Blood splatters up and onto my hand, my wrist. Now even the small twitches have stopped. She's completely still. I blink. Let my hand fall away. Rivet, revelets of my own blood decorate the underside of my arm. Mixing with the spray left behind from Gidget. It's a strange feeling. The room is so quiet now. So quiet I'm not even sure if I'm breathing. Then, all oh, clunking footsteps racing towards the door. It slams open. What? What the... Gens is standing in the doorway, just staring at us. I look towards him calmly, blood speckling my cheeks, my arms dark and glistening on my shirt. We had an argument. I finally say when Gens... <laughs> you, you, an argument does not state what has happened here. You... <laughs> Genzu winces, brings a hand to his already sweaty face. But before either one of us can do anything, the sound of a commotion downstairs interrupts our standoff. What now? Genzu groans and darts back outside. He's there a few moments. Then I see his eyes widen. He comes running back inside, slamming the door behind him. We've got... Big trouble on our hands, Iggy. Just before he manages to slam the door closed, I catch a glimpse of a person. If they could even be called a person. Their skin is gaunt and grey and their eyes are puffy and red. They claw at the door. I hear low moans as the door shakes and rattles beneath their nails. Get up, get up! Gensu grabs me by the collar and pulls me to my feet. Thin eyes the red puddle in the middle of my shirt. How how bad is it? I yank the front of my collar down to try to get a better look, one hand rubbing inside to gen to gingerly poke at the flayed skin. I think it's pretty deep. Stop, stop, stop! Genzu holds a hand up to stop my self exclamation. The other to his mouth as his face goes slightly green. An extra zealous thud against the door makes both of us jump and Genzu begins cursing beneath his breath. Goodness sakes, think, think, think! He hits his fist against his forehead. I watch him for a moment blinking. Then wander towards Gidget, bending down to snatch the scissors from her chest. Don't worry. I'll take care of them. Our zombie killing spree is about to begin. The sound Genzu makes would have been hilarious in any other situation, like a strangled half gasp, half squawk. He leaps towards me, engulfed my wrist in his palm and jerking me backwards. The blank you will, he says, I'm sure the hell not gonna watch you get ripped apart by those things. Well, somebody's gotta do something, and I'm thinking, so, and I'm getting a little bit tired of you thinking I need to be protected like some cowering rabbit. Gensu's face twists. That must have hurt. I don't care. I'm getting sick of it. I turn back towards the door, only for it to come flying open with a horrifying slam that sends the door backwards and bouncing off the wall. The bodies come pouring in. There's so many of them. They crawl and lurch and moan like zombies, all of them with skin pulled taut across their bones and eyes sunken and pink. A whole pile of them spills over and through the doorway as they clutch and crawl over each other to get inside the room. Goodness sakes! I hear Genzo screech next to me. And I have to admit, even my own eyes bug out at the sheer number of bodies reaching and dropping for us. I readjust my grip on the scissors and raise them hesitantly into the air. Ah, only for Genzu to promptly knee me right in the gut. The air goes out of me like a deflating balloon, and in that moment of limp helplessness he grabs me right around the middle and goes charging at the window. It's all I could do to cover my eyes before with a gut rattling impact on my backside, glass goes flying splinters of wood go sailing and the two of us go tumbling out through the shattered wood window pane and slam into the awning below the combination of impact and weight must be too much for it as not a second later the whole thing buckles beneath us 
and we go clatter into the ground in a shower of boards and shingles. I have a moment, waiting for my ears to stop ringing, my body to stop screaming. Then push myself to my feet, careful to avoid any errant nails and broken wood. Genzo grows next to me, his, so he nurses his shoulder and his, as he sits up. Blank my life. What the hell was that? I half grumble, half moan as I attempt to push myself shakily to my feet. Bloody saving your life was what that was, though apparently I should have just left you there to get eaten alive, huh? Genzo lurched to his feet next to me with a wince. I take a menacing step forward, index three to... In, sorry, index finger already ramrod straight, but the sound of groans from above is enough to stop my angry tirade before it even begins. I glance up to see Gidget's as rabid fans reaching and groping out through the window. Some of them are already attempted to pull themselves out after us. And the situation is not much better on the ground. More grunt faces appear around the corners of the nearby buildings limping and dragging themselves across the once cheery cobbles. God damn it! I rave rave! Gensu brings his hands to his hat, gaze jumping furtively across our surroundings. His eyes sharpen. Come on, I have an idea. He takes off. I yell at the sound of a body falling behind us, then quickly follow. I'm not sure what we're going at first. Or where we're going at first, but there's zombies there. We round the corner and Genzu jokes backwards at the approach of another swarm of clawing, reaching hands. Other way, other way! Exactly. We quickly reroute to the opposite road, circling around a set of buildings and just narrowly avoiding the convergence of two more packs. Damn. Then straight on back to the main street, groans, moans, and guttural screeches filling the air around us. Where are we going? I try to think back to earlier, when I left Gidget and Genzu in the street to start my bout of binge drinking. Gidget had gone. Then it comes to me. I'm not even sure how, but somehow, by the recesses of my brain, I see an expansive pier filled with bobbing boats, a horizon of water, and flashes. So many flashes, cameras everywhere. I shake my head. We're going to the pier. And indeed, we are going to the pier. Okay, this has gone on for a bit longer than I usually have done so. So, we're going to make our exit of this episode right here. I'm really uncomfortable with this experience, and that is a good thing in a way, because... I think in the synopsis of this game, it really says about like testing the limitations and the um, the stretches of what a person can do with the human mind. And in this case, it really brings out both the best and worst in people because of the experiences around us and the fact that this is our own wonderland. And whenever anything of our own entireties gets affected, then the wonderland around us really becomes more warped. But then again, that's also a thing within our mind as well, because of the fact that, well, our own mental stability can also affect the wonderland in which we have created. Or five of us. But this has been a rather uncomfortable ex episode, because I'm used to seeing Iggy not being this angry at all like i've never seen iggy angry at all at all within our wonderland so far but this episode my gosh he's always been angry it's been a new side to him and at first i kind of liked it because he's been a bit more confident but it's gotten to a point where it's overwhelmed his emotions and he's gotten this idea that it's only all of them it's just about all of them and if anybody says anything bad about all of them, then I'm going to be furious. But thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this episode of Our Wonderland in the comment section below. And we shall see each other next time and see how we escape from these horde of rabid fans of Gidget. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, everyone.